So here's the ARM V8M secure debug uh, running on this right here. So, oh, so who are you? Hello, I am Mark Moreno from ARM, and today we are going. We bring here uh, a demo using the, the latest uh, uh, subsystem uh, for IoT endpoints. Uh, so, we, what are we looking at here? Here we have uh, running our subsystem Kotlin SSC 200, uh, which is the first subsystem which has uh, a Cortex M53, which is based on the ARM VATM. So this is Cor ARM Cortex M33. Uh, it's ARM Core Link. Uh, I mean, uh, who's uh, shipping this board? Is it like a test board or? It's a test board, and and it's a proof that we can create uh, an endpoint subsystem. Uh, based on the latest security features. So who's uh, shipping this test board and who's using it right now? Uh, right now, uh, we are showing uh, what we can do uh, to our partners. No one is shipping it, it's not... Uh, it's, uh, it's an ARM it's system? It's an ARM system. It's using the MPS2 board uh, with an yeah. FPGA and inside the FPGA we have the subsystem in it. Can you point to... Uh, where's the FPGA? Uh, the FPGA is below this shield yeah. adapter, so we cannot see it. Um, and maybe what we want to show here is uh, showing the, the security features that we have. So mainly what we have is we have a secure uh, code which is booting, which is configuring our system uh, in order to, to uh, create two spaces, the secure one and the non-secure one. And when uh, the system is configured, then the non-secure code starts to run and is calling the secure uh, region every uh, 500 milliseconds. Uh, the secure code, what it's gonna do, is gonna uh, check this switch, and based on that, it's gonna allow the debugger to see what is going on in the secure part or not. Uh, that is interesting because what we are showing here is that when we talk about security, even we can secure um, the secure area uh, against the, the debugger as well. So, what this is a very, very interesting uh, feature. So mainly what we are doing here, so we have the secret code which is generating uh, a random uh, secret value and it's installing in a secret area. When uh, we are insecure, everybody cannot read anything in that memory space. Uh, we can try it, so we can try to, to connect the board. Um, what is this? This is a, uh, DS5. Is a, a DDS5 and that is connected directly to, the, to our board. So what we are going to do, we are going to try to back uh, our code. Um, so disconnecting. Okay, and the interesting part is try to, uh, to access to the address where we are storing the secret, uh, the secret code, right? If we try to do it, so we are not able to see anything. It's empty. It's empty. So it's because it's secure. So now it's in secure mode. And uh, is, the, is this the only way to do security, to have two different regions? To have a, a basically, is it hardware regions or? Is that, yes, so, so all the security uh, is based on hardware. So it's enforced by hardware. And, and the interesting part is switching from one uh, context to the other is, is in few cycle, cycles. Physical. So f in few uh, cycles. So right. what is make it interesting. So you are not uh, adding any overhead to have that system in secure and non-secure And mode. this is trust zone? This is trust zone, this that's correct. This is trust correct. zone and small trust zone. It's a tiny correct. one so for, I, for uh, Cortex-M. That's correct. So what they did is they port the trust zone to the M class uh, to uh, enforce the security at the endpoint, which is nowadays is, is something very, very important based on the, last, uh, the latest attacks, right? So uh, in that subsystem, we are securing not only from the core point of view, also from the system point of view. And uh, here it says uh, Coalink SSE uh, 200. That's all. Uh, that's all some part, some IP that's part of the M M33. Oh yes, yes. It that's, is, it is. that's doing what in this relation? So uh, so the M33 uh, here we have two cores, and then we have the bus, and then we have some uh, security filters based on Frazon ones. And, um, and those filters are securing the memory. So imagine that you have, for example, a DMA, and if you secure some part of the, the, the memory, the DMA cannot write on that area, for example. And, and we are also securing the peripherals. That's why here we can see that some uh, peripherals are insecure, only if the secret code can interact with those peripherals. And also, in our definition, we define which peripherals are gonna be accessible from the non-secure code. 
And how do you, co how, what is the communication protocol? How does it work to communicate between secure and non-secure? So we have a specific uh, secure gateways. So is that a new design or has it always been like this with Trust Zone? Uh, ours was uh, like that in Trust Zone, but now there are new uh, um, instructions to make it, f do, uh, to make the transition very fast, right? Um, and that is what is doing right now, that system. But we and there's no way to hijack this part? Nobody no. can make it fake or anything? Uh, no, 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 at no. least. No, 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 no. So, so how it works is from the non-secure, you jump directly to the one instruction is called SG, and that checks if that zone is, uh, is non-secure callable. So it means, can I call it from the non-secure side? And it's like, yes, you can then directly, you can jump to the function, you switch the mode to the secure one, and then you go directly to the function, you perform something, and then you switch back to the non-secure. So uh, this, this was announced not so long ago, uh, maybe six months ago, yeah. and uh, um, uh, the chips are coming soon. Yes. And uh, the work, there's very hard, very dedicated work going on right now in the narrow with this. Uh, well, yes. What we, we try to do, we try to port uh, Zephyr on on that platform. Try to uh, to port uh, also Embed is porting to is ported to that platform. So we are trying to enable as much software as possible and try to show how to build secure applications. Uh, on those two systems. So does Zephyr work with all the security already? It's, in, it's implemented? It's, it's not yet. We are working on it just to have it as soon as possible. And uh, that's just one way of doing it. There could be other, oh, other OS? Correct. So, so uh, yeah, you can port other OS. At the end, you, what we want to show is uh, a kind of reference that is more or less our guidelines, how you should do it, but it's open. So you can uh, design it as based on your needs. And there's also Cortex M23, right? It's Cortex M33. And the 23, there is a 23 like this or no? Uh, it's similar. So we have the Cortex uh, uh, M23, uh, which is a kind of, one. it's a very small one. It's a kind of, we can say it like it's a, a kind of a Cortex M0 plus plus security. And, and the Cortex M33 is a kind of uh, Cortex M3, M4, and even M7. That's much plus bigger. Plus security. Much so, bigger. But can That's you bigger. do all this on the Cortex M23 also? Or only some of it? In the, on the small one. M23. 23. It's, it's, um, you have less things that you can do in there, but even you can bring security. You have less handlers, so you have less possibilities, but but the, the main core, the, uh, the, the trust on security is in there. And all the security is going to be easy for people to use because this is going to be shipping in every single M33. Yes. So, so, so what it's going to be easy for everybody to implement. Yes. We think that it's going to be very easy to, to implement. That's why we are going to provide, uh, or we provide some, uh, some examples, how they should do it, some guidelines uh, to the people in order to make uh, uh, that uh, development easily. And it's all in open source. Uh, it's open source security, right? That is what we would like to do. Yeah. Right.